Hello everybody and welcome to my channel, I'm Chief Sweet. Today I'm gonna to show you how I take care of my green anoles. Starting off, I don't actually know if they're pronounced anoli or anoles, but I call them anoles. But if you are wondering where they're from, they're actually from the southeast part of the United States, from the Carolinas down to Florida, and a lot of other places like Georgia, you can see them in pretty much, like I said, the whole southeast of the United States. This is a great star lizard because you really don't have to do much. You just have to put them in an enclosure, give them the right amount of lighting, the right heat, water, feed them, and they're gonna live with you for many, many years. They're also really fun to watch because not only are they easy to take care of, they like to run around, they change colors, and a lot of people like that. I like to think of them as the American chameleon. And if you work with them, you can actually tame these lizards. I've seen plenty of people tame them. You can hold them, you can feed them from your hand, you can put them on your shoulder. It's pretty crazy what I've seen people, and I didn't even think these lizards were tameable to be honest. I always thought they are like crazy wild dudes who never want to be handled, but I have seen it. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about how I take care of mine, shall we? So starting off though, these lizards will grow to four to eight inches and reach maturity in 18 months from birth. They can live up to six years in captivity and three in the wild. They only live to three in the wild mainly due to the fact that predators eat them. And that's honestly where they get their like sneaky behavior and don't wanna be handled is mainly because everything in the wild will eat these lizards, including other lizards. So let's talk about enclosures. Where are you gonna keep the anole in? So if you have like a baby anole, I've seen people keep them in five gallon tanks up to 10 gallon tanks. I do recommend that whatever tank you use, make sure it's able to have some heat and some cool end. I do keep my adult anoles in 20 gallon talls or 30 gallon talls, depending on if I have one or two anoles in there. One thing that is not talked about enough is building your own enclosure. I built this a uh, four foot by two foot chameleon cage for $120. You don't need to build something that big, obviously. You could probably build something that's like almost the equivalent of a 20 gallon for like $50. One thing I am saying a lot in this is the tall factor. That's because these lizards love to climb up. They like to climb up trees. They like to hide in bushes that are pretty tall from the ground. And that's what you want in the enclosure. You want a very tall enclosure. Think height more than width. You don't want something that's land based. You want something that's height based. So let's go ahead and move on to substrate, which I think is a very important because you're gonna to want to have something that holds humidity very good. You could use cocoa core. However, cocoa core is eco earth for those who don't know. I don't like using eco earth because for me, it feel like it dries out very quickly. I do use peat moss mixed with sand. I get that from Home Depot. It costs me about like $10 altogether and it will last you a very long time. So if you have one enclosure, maybe you don't wanna do that because just one bag of peat moss and one bag of sand, which I get huge, I say one bag, but it's a huge brick. It's like 84 quarts, I don't know how much that is, but it's a huge brick of peat moss. It costs like $10. I, I said it cost $10 all together, I realized it cost $13 altogether. I made a mistake. <laughs> So yeah, $10 for the peat moss, $3 for the bag of sand. Sometimes it's like $4, depends on what time of the year it is. And that alone will fill up every tank I have in my reptile room. That's how much it is. So it is a lot and it will go the, the distance. So how I mix that up is I do like an 85, 15, 80, 20 split. I'll show you right here what it's gonna look like. And it's a little sandy and this is great for bioactive terrariums. I have bioactive terrariums where like, as soon as, because it is peat moss, so it's kind of like, it's got a lot of decaying matter in it. It will grow mushrooms. And as soon as I put my isopods, as soon as I put my isopods and uh, springtails in there, they go crazy. They breathe like crazy. I, I started turning up for this video. I cleaned out my anole tank, so I'll show you because obviously I make sure my tanks are very clean for the videos. <laughs> but I was cleaning it out. And when I started stirring up the dirt, the amount of isopods that came crawling out of the dirt was so many and I think I put like five in there. But yes, it'll be good for plant growth, it'll be good for uh, bioactive terrariums, and that's what I use. You don't have to use it, you can use whatever you like that can hold moisture and create humidity. Now let's move on to decorating. Now how I decorate mine, I just pretty much make sure there's a lot to climb on. Uh, I have a th philosophy and it's gonna go for this video of I try to mimic their environment to the best I can. And if I can't do that, I want the temperature and everything else to be what they come from. And the environment can kind of be similar to that, you know? So obviously these come from Florida. I tried to do like a kind of a bush style thing. I didn't do very good for mine, but you get the gist. Try to kind of recreate their environment to the best of your ability. So for these guys, you want tall things from the climb on, lots of vines, lots of bushes, bush-like material. And that's what I did for the enclosure you're gonna see most of this video. 
Now let's get to the most important things, which is the humidity, the temperature, the food, and the water. So humidity is pretty important because it's gonna help with the shed. I like to keep mine between 60 and 70. If it gets to like 30 on some days, it's okay. I keep mine in a glass tank and glass really lets humidity out. So sometimes it might get to like 38 and I'll miss it, you know? And most of the time though, it sticks between like 55 to 70 and that's where I keep mine at. But I always try to get in a 60 to 70 range. Moving on to water, I this is very important because not only will they need it for the drinking, but they'll need it for shed and that's what keeps the humidity up. I like to mist my enclosures in the morning to mimic a morning dew. Because a lot of times, a lot of these lizards, it's like they're like chameleons, I kinda, that's what I can, they're similar to chameleons because a lot of times chameleons, veiled chameleons at least, would drink the morning dew. And so I do that with my green gnolls and I've, they do do that. In the morning when I spray them, I spray them like as soon as I wake up, like eight o'clock, I'll spray them down and I see them, they'll go up to the glass and they'll start drinking or they'll drink from the fake leaves. I'm trying to get the tank that you see in this video. I was trying to get its leaves going, but I have a lot of fake plants in this uh, tank and they'll drink off of the fake plants. And I've, like I said, I've never really seen them drink from the water bowl, I leave a big water bowl in there, but I've never seen my anoles drink from the water bowl. They always drink from the mist. So this is the last part of the most important step, and that is the lighting, the temperature, and all of this. So it's very important that you provide green anoles with UVB. I provide my younglings with like, probably like a tropical UVB. I use Arcadia brand UVB, and that's all I use UVB wise, mainly because I can link them together. But I know Zilla carries a really good UVB bulb from what I heard. I haven't tested it myself, but from what I heard, it's very good. And what's weird about it is when you buy one, make sure to get the tropical one. But when you buy it, it comes with like a plastic guard over the UVB. And usually UVB does not penetrate through glass or plastic or anything like that. It kind of slows down. Even screen will cut down the UVB. So apparently they've made it to where it goes through it perfectly. I don't know. I really want to test that. That may be for a later video, but it's really important to have UVB for your green anoles. I use the Shade Dweller for my adults. And for like younger ones, I use tropical UVB. I also keep mine in bioactive tanks. And for my bioactive tanks, I have an LED lamp. And I usually use like this strip light I got from Walmart. It was $8 and I like homemade like a little thing to cover for the um, tall enclosures. So like these, for example, I use these for a lot of my tanks. For my bioactive tanks, this is LED lights. And these will grow your plants. If you have plants, if you're trying to do bio bioactive stuff and your plants are dying, these will grow your plants. My plants love the LED lights and really bright, especially my strip lights that I use. It's just a hyper tough, really cheap LED strip light. And all my plants grow really well with it. I got this from Walmart. It's like I said, it's just a great value, 75 watt LED Walmart light bulb. And same with my strip lights that I use for a lot of my tanks as well. It's just. LED Walmart lights, cheap, okay? I like to go things cheap. But for UVB, that will, that's the only thing that you can't escape is the UVB. It will not be cheap. And you will have to replace them every year. Temperature-wise, I like to keep my green anoles in the hot side of the tank, 80 to 90 degrees, and on the cool side, 70 to 80 degrees. To get my heat up, which right now it's very hot, my room, you may even see me sweating right now, but it is 80 degrees ambient temperature in my reptile room. It's very hot. And f during this, I actually don't like, for s the knolls that set up high, I do not put heat lamps on them. Like right now, most of the cage you're gonna see is doesn't have a heat lamp on it, but for heat lamp, I use these. I use literally great value. This is a hundred watt. Don't get, do not get the hundred watt. I get the 50 watt or the 75 watt, depending if like the, how much the temperature is going up. This is like 10 bucks for 12. It might be a little bit more than that, but it, I get a big old box of this. It's halogen lights. And you'll probably see these in pet stores. And this is also a halogen light. The only difference is a reptile company makes this Literally the only difference is the design of the bulb. Even it says right here, it's the, the, the basking, what ordinary reflector bulbs, this is just has a tighter beam. If you're gonna have an enclosure, if you have a regular, one of these, let me get it. If you have one of these clamp lights right here, I got this again, you don't have to buy this at a pet store. These go for like $30 at a pet store. I don't understand why. You could go to like a Home Depot, get it for like six. I got this on Amazon for $6.88. I'll have it linked in the description if you want it. But yeah, I get one of these six bucks on Amazon. I put it on top of the cage, have one of these guys in there and it works just fine. Now that we've got all that down, let's talk about feeding. Green anoles are known to eat anything that is pretty much the size of their head. So I offer my anoles all kinds of insects from small dubias, crickets, mealworms, and many, many more. However, my anoles have never 
eaten mealworms. I don't know if that's like a me thing or what, but I can't for the life of me get my animals to eat mealworms. I've tried many times, but everything else they pretty much eat. Also remember to dust with calcium a couple of times a week. Just put them in a bowl. I usually use a sour cream bowl like this or just anything like a plastic and I'll put some crickets in there, shake it up, throw it in there. I do it like probably twice a week. The last thing I'll talk about is housing together. One thing I do see a lot is some people say you can house them together. You totally can. I've housed green animals together, but I will say males do get very territorial and they will fight to the death. I've never had that happen for me, but I've heard people have that happen to them. So be very careful if you're gonna have two anoles in the same tank and you can't tell if they're male or female. And now if you do have a male and a female in a tank, most likely they are gonna breed and it's gonna be very hard on the female anole. So you make sure to give her extra calcium and extra food so that way she can have nourishment for her bodies because a lot of times even with my female anoles, it is very hard on the female and they do need a little extra stuff. And a lot of times I even separate the females because once they start laying, I really don't want her stressed out at all. And I want her eating and I want her well fed. Because if you do have them together and she is laying eggs, most likely the other anole might get to the food before she does. And that's all I have. That's exactly pretty much a rough guide on how I take care of my anoles. I hope this video helped you in some way. And please, don't just stop here. Continue researching at Knowles, okay? Because it's just a quick guide. I may not have covered everything that you need to know. Continue learning, continue researching. I will see you next time.